St. Peter says in the epistle concerning Christ, he says, who when he was reviled did not revile. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, amen. Well, they say that the devil is always in the details. He's always hidden around somewhere and doesn't want to be seen until he's already got you. That was the case, I think, a little bit anyway, for St. George. He lived in the time when, I believe it was Diocletian, was just about to begin his persecutions against the Christians. He called in all of his counselors, St. George being one of them. He was also a soldier in the Roman Empire. And he asked the counselors, each one of them, what they thought about having this persecution. And they all said yes, and they were very much in favor of it, all except for St. George. When they found out that he was a Christian, they dragged him before an idol of the god, the false god Apollo. And he, when he was standing before this image, he cried out and he asked him, are you the god that has called me here to sacrifice to you? All of a sudden a demon, a real demon, comes out of this statue and he, in fear, he said, no, it was not I. The god who you worship, George, is the only true God. And at that moment, all of the other idols in the temple fell to the ground and smashed into a thousand pieces. The devil was hidden, but he was there. Have you ever noticed, and think about it, apply it to yourself, ask yourself this question, that we humans when it comes to the supernatural, we, want, we expect and we want everything to be spectacular, dramatic. Saint Teresa of Avila, when she entered the religious life, she expected it to be a, a life of many heroic deeds. She had to adjust the fact that life in a religious order was a simple, and routine way of life, doing small things as sweeping the cloisters and making your bed, but doing them all with the love of God. The path to heaven is in doing well the daily things of life. Where the Jews, when they expected some political savior to come in on horseback and with much power, and save Israel from the Romans. And how shocked they were to see that the Messiah was a humble one who loved poverty. And over the last three years, we kind of expected communism to, to come in and come to power behind tanks and armed men and red flags with sickles and hammers, didn't we? That's how the movies portray it. That's how it should be. And then many brave men will raise up, rise up and overcome the communists. But instead, communism came hiding like the devil. It came behind a cloth mask and lockdowns and mandates it came under the guise of taking care of one's health and of one's neighbor. People didn't see the red flags or the tanks or any of the spectacular storybook takeovers, and they fell for the narrative. The same happened at the beginning of the great apostasy, Vatican II. Everyone might have expected, after reading St. Paul's his foretelling, his prediction of the great apostasy, everyone might have expected that they would see and know it. And they would, again, glorious soldiers of Jesus Christ would rise up to defend Holy Mother Church. 
Instead, the devil was there in the details. It was first one part of the liturgy, a small part changed, and then another, and another, until after the, the serpent had slithered in so slyly, he caught you by the ankles. Now, the Mass of Vatican II is no longer a Catholic Mass. Its doctrines no longer Catholic, and the Church of Vatican II is no longer Catholic. It started with the details. The devil is always in the details. Always there were some who saw what was happening, but many, many more who did not see what was happening. Because this is how human nature is. Most are ready to listen to the narrative and to follow the mainstream. And this is just what the devil wants. You see, when a burglar comes, he doesn't make a lot of noise and announce to you that he's coming. No, nope. he comes quietly and stealthily so that he is neither seen nor heard until he has done his mischief and gotten what he wants. So also, very similarly, with the devil. Bishop Sheen said that the devil is never more powerful as when people think he does not exist. He has hidden himself for so very long. But how is it that now he is so out in the open? Well, it's because he was always in the details, hidden. But now he's here and he is in charge. We see how he has public veneration with TV shows. I'm thinking of one, I've never seen it, but I've read the reviews of it. The TV show Lucifer, don't watch it. It makes fun of the character of Lucifer, sort of, he got sick of hell, and then he came up to LA and became a cop, and he was on the good side of the law now, and they portray him as a good guy in that. Well, now in Boston, next week, there is planned an event called the Satan Con. Have you heard about it in the news? It's run by the Satanic Temple, and they are tooting it as the largest Satanic gathering in all of history. And this group, Satan, the Satanic Temple, says they don't believe in a literal Satan, but only a literary one, and that they don't actually worship the devil, they say. SatanCon, that's the name of the event, they say is a chance for our community to build friendships, to learn from one another, to actually get to meet and spend time together. And many of them will say, well, this is, this is innocent, something like a Halloween party or something. It might be evil, they'll say, but not like the real Luciferian worshipers, because they'll just have discussion panels as advertised and entertainment, and they say, we're not going to have a black mass. They'll have a satanic ball, a concert by some group called the Satanic Planet, and then all of that is followed up off-site with a drag queen show. So it can't be all that bad, right? The Satanic Temple says this about their group. First, that it denies the existence of God and Satan and the supernatural in general. And that secondly, they are merely a political activist group that protests religious symbolism in public spaces and mocks Christianity by offering unbaptism and hosting black masses. Some of their work 
that they have done over the recent years are these. First, remember when the Supreme Court was, had overruled the Roe versus Wade and all of that? Well, they were going out and about the Satanic Temple saying that we, it should be approved the, the abortion should be approved by the federal government because, and they, they argued that it would be under their religious freedom because abortion is part of their religion. So here's what they actually did in New Mexico. They opened an abortion clinic during that time offering birth control pills by mail to those, and this is a quote, who wish to perform the Satanic Temple's religious abortion ritual. The second thing they have been known to do is to protest public prayer in schools and Christian images in public. And they themselves will erect Satanic images in public. Across from an image of the Ten Commandments, they put up an image of a false idol. Thirdly, they did one year have black mass on the Harvard University campus, and they did it again in Houston a few years ago. At the first mass, I wouldn't read the blasphemy, but just so you know how horrible these people are, I will read it. They said that after they offered this Black Mass in Houston, they say, the Catholics or their fat mama Mary couldn't even stop us. And that the consecrated host was defiled, destroyed, and swept into the trash where it belongs. These are satanic people. But sure, they don't worship Satan. They're just a nice group trying to help the world. This group is, says that blasphemy is a legitimate expression of independence from traditional norms, which norms they consider to be counterproductive. And so they call the event in Boston the weekend of blasphemy. Catechism lesson. What is blasphemy? The Catechism explains, says, that blasphemy is to speak scornfully of God, his saints, or to speak contemptuously of objects connected with his worship. And it continues to explain that blasphemy is, an, is essentially a diabolic sin and one of the gravest transgressions. St. Bernardine says of it, Blasphemy may be called a sin peculiar to the devils and the reprobates. For as the Holy Ghost speaks by the mouth of the good, so the devil speaks by the mouth of, blasph of the blasphemer. St. Jerome says, All sins are slight in comparison with blasphemy, for by all other sins one offends God indirectly. But by this sin, one offends against the Most High himself and not against his image. And St. Bernard of Clairvaux said, All other sins arise either from human frailty or ignorance, but blasphemy comes from the malice of the human heart. God is not mocked, Scripture tells us. Blasphemy is not a, saint, a sin that God takes lightly. In the Old Testament, Sennacherib, who was the king of the Assyrians, blasphemed God. He then lost 200,000 men in war against the Hebrews and was assassinated by his own two sons. And King Baltasar profaned the vessels of the sanctuary and that very same night, the enemy entered the city. He was killed, 
and his city was taken over by the Persians. Our Lord once said to Sister St. Pierre of the Holy Face Devotions, If my justice were not restrained by my mercy, it would instantly crush the guilty, and all creatures, even inanimate ones, would rise up to avenge my outraged honor. I think in times like these, we should be proactive, like Saint Jerome, who said, and take this quote to heart, a dog may bark in his master's defense, and am I, am I to stand by silent when God's holy name is blasphemed? So I'm asking you all to speak up, to make a holy hour of reparation, either here in church before the Blessed Sacrament, or as I mentioned before, come back this afternoon for Vespers and Benediction. That does take about an hour. Or do a holy hour in the home, especially those of you that have this sacred heart enthroned there. Or perhaps you can make a novena of nine days in reparation to the Holy Face. Remember that each blasphemy is a direct insult against the face of God, as if you were standing there spitting in our Lord's face. And the purpose of the Holy Face devotion is to make up for blasphemy, and even by way of uh, note, to defeat communism, to console our Lord as St. Veronica did, as Christ bore his cross to Calvary, to wipe all the spittle of blasphemy from his face by your acts of reparation. Sister St. Pierre said that the demon is ever seeking to rob the Good Shepherd of the lambs obtained at so great a price. But this work of reparation is a work most pleasing to God and to his saints, and it will be a path to your great glory in heaven. Let us say this with all sincerity. The more others despise thee, O Lord, the more will I love thee. And let us offer the holy face to God. Eternal Father, turn away thine angry gaze from our guilty people. Look instead upon the face of thy beloved Son, for this is the face of him in whom thou art well pleased. May God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.